Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is now question number two from the Mechanics M1, October 2022, um, from Edexcel International A Level. And this question here is about moments. Here it tells us about a uniform rod AB, which has a length of 2A and a mass M. The rod is held in equilibrium in a horizontal position by two vertical light strings were attached, or which are attached to the rod at C and D, where AC is two-fifths of A and D um, B is three-fifths of A as shown in figure one. A particle P is placed on the rod at B. The rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium. Part A says find in terms of M the largest possible mass of the particle P. So let's just use this little diagram down here to um, draw what we have okay so now it says a uniform rod AB so the word uniform means that its mass is distributed evenly uh, uh, you know along its length which means that the center of mass can be taken as the geometric center of the rod so that means we can say that the weight of the rod acts exactly halfway along its length so exactly 1a um, along from one end exactly in the middle will be its its mass okay its weight so the mass is m so its weight is going to be mg that's mg its weight okay and that's exactly as we just mentioned now um, exactly a along from the end okay that's a and that's a as well right okay that's the first thing then it says the rod is had in equilibrium in a horizontal position by two vertical light strings which are attached to the rod at c and d so that would mean that there would be a tension at c and d in the strings okay so you'd have tc and td we'll write tc and td and then it says um, a particle is placed on the rod at B. The rod remains horizontal in equilibrium. So a particle is attached at B. So there's going to be a weight down here. Okay, we don't know what that weight is. It says find in terms of M the largest possible mass of the particle P. Okay, let's say the mass of the particle P. Let's let's say the mass mass of P. Let's call it X. Okay, so you have x times g as the weight on this end. So it says find the largest possible mass of the particle p. What does that mean? Well, that means that the largest possible mass of this particle, which is uh, p, okay, this um, we call the particle p, his mass is xg. The largest possible mass of this would be the mass such that this is going to be at the limit of its equilibrium meaning this thing is going to if i increase that mass anymore then this object will go out of equilibrium which would mean it would start you know this 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 would be like a pivot it will start to to tilt like this okay it would it would start to tilt if if the mass became too big then it would tilt about d okay it would tilt about d and it would it would turn like this it would it would start turning like this Okay, that's what would happen if this became too large. So we want to find um, the limit of it such that it is still in equilibrium, but it's just about to start tilting about D. Okay, so we can say the largest possible value of um, M, okay, the mass, sorry. Okay, so the largest, the largest mass of P is is such that the system is about to tilt it's on the verge of tilting about to tilt okay um on a on on d okay it's about to tilt on d now so it's about to tilt on d so it's still in equilibrium so the moments clockwise and anticlockwise moments are still equal it's just about to tilt now at the point where it's just about to tilt on d 
then the tension in this string is going to become zero. So the tension, once this, once this starts to tilt, the tension in this string is going to be zero because this is going to become like loose and then it's going to be like uh, tilting about D. So all the tension will be on this string. So at the point where the tension in the string becomes zero but it's still in equilibrium, okay, that's the weight that we're looking for. Okay, that's the way we're looking for. The, the point where it's the moments on clockwise and anticlockwise are still equal, but the tension in C is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So what we can do is um, we can take um, moments about D. Okay, and if we take moments about D, okay, We've got the tension in C equals zero. So the clockwise moments about D, okay, when the tension in the string C is zero, is going to be just xg times this distance here, okay, the distance between these two points, which is going to be, well, that's three fifths A as we can see. We're told that. Okay, so the xg times three fifths A, and that's equal to the anti-clockwise moments which is mg times this distance here okay so we have this distance here that we have to also deal with okay and that distance from there to there is going to be basically this is like the whole thing is like a a minus three fifths a that's two fifths a so from here to here is two fifths a so this is mg times two fifths a okay so we need to find what x is in terms of m so we can then uh, rearrange this the G's cancel out and we're left with now um, the A's cancel out so we're left with three fifths of X equals two fifths of M multiplied by five the five cancels out so X is equal to two thirds of M okay X is two thirds of M so that's the mass of P so you can say the mass of P is two thirds M Okay, so there's the answer to part A. All right, so the important thing here is the largest possible ma mass of P means the largest mass of P such that the rod is horizontal and in equilibrium. For it to be in equilibrium, the moments clockwise and anticlockwise moments have to be equal. All right, and um, it's the largest value that this, this mass can be would be such that it's just about to go out of equilibrium. If it's just about to go out of equilibrium, this is about to happen, where the tension in this string is going to become zero. So we've got the point where the tension of the string is zero, but it's still in equilibrium. So when we take moments about D, okay, which is the most sensible thing to do, because we don't know the value of, uh, you know, what the masses are. We can't work out what the tension in D is, right? So we take moments about D that eliminates D. Um, then we can see the clockwise moments are only made up by XG times its distance. TC times the distance, well, that's going to be zero times that distance because we said that the tension in C has to be zero, right? And then that's equal to the anticlockwise moments, which is mg times two-fifths A, and that's how we found the value of X, which is the mass of the particle P, such that this is in equilibrium and um, it's horizontal. All right, so there's part A of this question. Now for part B, it says, given that the mass of P is one-half M, find in terms of m and g the tension in the string that is attached to the rod at c so now this is a different situation now they've told us well we know that as we said this this is the same mass okay um, it's a uniform rod so the weight acts exactly halfway through its center so we'll say that this is mg and they've told us in addition that the weight at p of the particle which is attached at b is a half m this particle P which is attached here and then you've got your tension in the string C and your tension in the string D okay which we we don't know this is not the case uh, as the last way it's about to tilt now we know the mass of P it's in equilibrium we've got to find the tension that is attached to this to the rod at C now the easiest way to deal with the question uh, such as this is to basically um, take moments about what we don't need. Now, what we don't need is the tension in, this should be D, sorry, the tension in the string at D. We need to find the tension in the string at C. So if we take moments about D, this is a shorthand way of writing it, take moments about D, 
Then we have the clockwise moments, which are made up by a half m times its distance, which is 3 fifths a. Plus, now you have the tension at C, okay, which is what we have to find. TC times its distance. Now, what, what is the distance between those two? Okay, the distance between these two here. Well, the whole thing is 2A. That's going to be 1A, so it's A. So it's TC times A. That's Those are the clockwise moments about D. If we take moments about D, those will have the clockwise effect. And the, uh, that's equal to the anticlockwise moments, which is mg times this distance here, okay, which is 2 fifths a. That's 2 fifths a, because from here to here is 1. That's 1 minus 3 fifths, 2 fifths. So that's equal to mg times 2 fifths a. All right, so that's a half mg, sorry. A half mg, the weight. Okay, the weight is mg, so half mg. Okay, times 3 fifths A plus TC times A equals MG times 2 fifths A. Now we need to find what TC is. So we can see here that straight away what's going to cancel out are the A's. Well, let's just, um, let's just um, simplify this. So that's 3 fifths times a half, which is 3 over 10 MGA plus A times TC equals, and that's 2 fifths times MG. A. So we can see A's will cancel out and we have to find TC. So it says TC is equal to 2 fifths mg minus 3 over 10 mg. So that's going to be, that's 4 over 10 mg minus 3 over 10 mg, which is 1 over 10 mg. So that's the tension in the string at C. And there's the answer to part B. Okay, pretty simple stuff here. All right, just... Um, don't forget to put the G with the, the mass, MG, that's a weight here. All right, so that's the answer to part two. Um, quite straightforward, just simple question on moments. Okay, so you can have a, a rod resting on supports. You can also have a, red, a rod, sorry, which is supported by wires or by strings um, attached to the ceiling like here. All right, so here we have the answer to part two, uh, question two of this October 2022 Mechanics M1 paper. Other questions which are related to this paper from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions which are related to the topic of moments in M1 can be found in the playlist that is in this region here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.